Okay, welcome to another episode of Dwarf Fortress. And this time, there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, nothing really new on the surface. I did create a refuse pile out here. But, we got a lot of stuff happening on the floors below. Uh, let's start off with what's happened that's entirely new. Uh, you can see here that there's now another, uh, walkway down to get to the second floor, or third floor, I'm not sure which floor this is. But, uh, yeah, so that has that going for it. There's a soap maker's workshop in the other wing, as well as a kitchen, which is constantly rendering animal fat. And, uh, then we'll go down this hallway. You can see there's a refuse stockpile now in the room with all the miasma where it was coming from, and pretty much constantly spews out miasma. Now what's really awesome is this is right across the hall, basically, um, and it is going to be our bathhouse. It's going to be where dwarves go to get clean by using soap and water. And the the process of getting water here is extremely complicated. In fact, it's so complicated I'm considering setting up in something entirely new that you'll see in a little bit. Uh, but for now, you can see that this area here is the doorway. They come in through the door, and then there are two hallways. And the hallways go into the large chamber with the, the pools, or where water will be. Right now there's not any water there. Uh, and these areas here to the left and right of those hallways are going to be expanded and there that's where our soap stockpiles are going to be so dwarves will go here use soap and then use this as a water source to get in and i know there's a way to um create swimming pools but uh well not actual buildings that are swimming pools that's in a mod uh, the genesis mod in particular uh, but in the vanilla version you can actually make basically a dwarven swim pool which forces them to go into like knee high water um but i don't think i'm going to do that yet and once i if i ever do that it'll be for the military so they can get some swimming skill up so yeah that's the bathhouse it's currently being smoothed down i'm going to engrave all these pillars as soon as they're smoothed down um what else have we got? Oh yes, the uh, the forges. Uh, I did have a much more grand design than this, but it did not work out simply because the plumbing is going to have to kind of circuit around uh, what I initially had planned. Uh, but it's got four smelters here. Um, and they're all set to just make coke right now. And we do have all dwarves that are smelters with a job, all furnace operators. Uh, so that's good. And uh, go up a floor. We can take a look at the waterworks. Uh, take a look here. On the top floor, you'll notice that uh, there are little holes here. There's actually floodgates in all of these, and they're hooked up to levers. Uh, and it's a pretty complex system, but the water is finally ready to enter the first chamber, I think. So I'm having the dwarves, our miners, go out and start poking holes in the uh, the river there. And that will allow water to flood in. And I'm not sure how well my game will hold up to all this water flooding in at once, but we'll see. Um, so yeah, it goes down that chute that I had planned out. And it continues going down, goes down. Down here, there are more floodgates. These are also hooked up to a lever, but um, I haven't done anything with them yet. Uh, there's another floodgate here, because you can see there's an indentation in the bottom of this pool. Uh, and this goes into kind of the central plumbing aqueduct, uh, where this is kind of a water tank. This is kind of where we're going to draw from the water tank. Uh, and this area here is where all of the plumbing is probably going to route out from. You can see there's kind of a service tunnel here, uh, and there there isn't one over here yet. I'll be making one in the future. Uh, but that, that allows dwarves to come down and... Uh, dig out new areas if the if need be or to set up levers and stuff um, so that works uh, here you can see there's down arrows uh, you can see there's actually a small section of land that is not visible from the upper floor which is channeled out and that's because the water will actually be flowing through there so it doesn't go over the the surface tile here and that'll make it go down these two chutes uh, this one goes to the Noble's Quarter, 
Um, right now it's only hooked up to the area here outside of the mayor's house, but it'll probably be expanded in the future. Um, the other one goes to the bathhouses, and that's being set up right now. In fact, you can see there's someone carrying a floodgate down to the uh, the central reservoir there. And I have yet to hook up either of those to switches, but I will once uh, once we get water flooding into the main area. Um, so my goal right now is just to get water starting to move through the waterworks and uh, hopefully get the central water tank thing kind of full up. Uh, and also, I'm planning on on the lower levels, once I go a little bit lower than the plumbing level, and this entire level is probably going to be dedicated to plumbing, except for a staircase which allows you to go down farther. Uh, but on the levels below this one, and actually this one is is probably going to be plumbing too, uh, but on like this level, it's going to be areas that are capable of supporting freestanding structures. So it's all going to be channeled out right from the beginning, uh, and it's going to allow us to create kind of underground buildings, which should certainly be inter interesting. Uh, since last I have filmed, we have had a lot of new trade goods happen. Uh, the elves recently left. I gave them an offering of like 7,000 to increase our relations. And I also traded with them for a bunch of wood, which you can see is still sitting in the stockpile. Our wood stockpile is almost constantly full, just because we have a lot in the trade depot that we can constantly use. And we also are still cutting down trees on the surface. Um, so we are not going to run out of that anytime soon. Um, I'll hit Z and show you the stockpiles. Our created wealth is significantly higher than last we met. Um, our imported wealth is really high. Our exported wealth has like quadrupled. Um, and a lot of that was just that one trade session with elves. I only gave them like four, uh, four bins worth of goods. And um, our food stores are pretty constant. We do have a sort of a regular flow of meat, but it's almost always like instantly gone. Um, so apparently our dwarves are very uh, happy to have meat. Also, you can see we have been upgraded to city status. Um, and our population is huge. It is 135 dwarves. That is ridiculous. There's no way I'll ever be able to manage 135 dwarves uh, very efficiently. Um, so a lot of these guys are probably going to get killed in battle because I'm, I'm not going to be able to deal with them any other way than just to assign them to a military squad and let them do training and stuff. Uh, you can see architecture is about a third of our created wealth. This is because since I've been smoothing everything out it's been worth a lot more. Um, justice tab, we actually have had justice happen, uh, because we now have a captain of the guard, and I'll show you that on the noble screen in a second, but Matthew Chris has been, um, he is due for either a beating or, uh, imprisonment, because I did not have the ability to create the ridiculous demands that our mayor has had to create, uh, metaled objects for him. Uh, and because of that, Matthew Chris is in trouble because he's the highest level metalsmith and uh, was not able to make that for our mayor. So you can see this is going to be a regular problem because whenever I cannot complete demands, innocent dwarves will be punished because they happen to be the profession that would make that good. So uh, Matthew Chris is going to be punished. I have yet to set up the jail yet, but I have given us a captain of the guard and given him an armory which you can see here, this is the guard armory. Um, it has yet to be assigned to a squad because I haven't really dealt with any of his stuff yet. Here's the captain of the guards room. It's Dudstraction. Um, and here's our new nobles page. We're starting to get nobles that I can't appoint and the dwarves don't elect, just kind of like bloodline nobles. Uh, we've probably got like, I think, three bloodline nobles at the moment and none of them have any bedrooms, but I don't care. Um, you can see Dud's traction still requires some stuff because his room's not yet complete. He needs weapon racks and dining room and office and all that stuff. That's under construction. Um, the two offices for our resident administrators have been decked out with new cabinets and 
Uh, I have basically added a bunch more seats and statues and stuff in here to make them nicer. Um, let's see, what else has happened? Oh yes, artifacts. We had an artifact made by our weaponsmith. I don't remember who it was. It wasn't one of the named dwarves, I don't think. Um, and this is the sole value of all weapons in our fortress. It's Lanlar Logum Marengal Birds Paints the Languishing Tongues, a bronze mace. So it's the first weapon created in our fortress, and it's an artifact weapon. So that's pretty cool. Uh, take a look at the description. Uh, it's a bronze mace. All craft dwarf strip is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with bituminous coal and onyx. The object is adorned with hanging rings of bronze and menaces with spikes of bituminous coal and tube agates. On the item is an image of the suitor of modesty, the gypsum kern in chestnut. That's one of our other artifacts. On the item is an image of dwarves and donkey bone. The dwarves are laboring. The artwork relates to the foundation of Mountain Severe. That's our settlement by the relieved canyons, those were our initial seven dwarves, of the Road of Basins, and that's our civilization, in the early spring of, I don't know what year that is supposed to be, but I imagine it was probably like maybe four or five years ago. On the item is an image of a cloud in bituminous coal. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that weapon's going to be very friendly for fighting, you know, like lava men or something, because it's 50% bituminous coal, but it's certainly pretty cool, and it does reference our other artifacts. Uh, so yeah, we do have a legendary weaponsmith because of that. It's pretty neat, and he will be able to make us really, really good weapons once we start uh, getting more coke ready for turning into metal bars from our smelters. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and let it play, and I want the dwarves to come over here and start getting the water flowing into our fortress. Oh right, there's actually one thing I can show you while that's while that's happening. Over here, you can see uh, this is the switches right here. These are all the switches that I've designated so far. These just control the primary uh, flow of water into the main water tank. They don't control any of the directional flow of the water. Uh, but over here, this is probably going to be one of the most important positions in the entire fortress. This area is going to be where our waterworks manager would live and work. The only thing he would do, whoever it would be, uh, is deal with switches, deal with levers, um, and direct the flow of water and other machinery in the fortress. And he would have luxurious quarters and be completely isolated, uh, except that we can drop food in there. Um, I'm planning on creating a bridge here and it would be not a retractable bridge, it would be a raised bridge, so it creates a wall right here, and this wall would extend all the way around the edges, and there would be no way to enter or leave except if the bridge is lowered or raised. So that means that no matter what, our fortress would be capable of existing once the, uh, even if like it was under attack by goblins or a siege of whatever, the guy in here is going to be fine because the bridge can be raised and lowered and he's going to have ample stockpiles of food and drink that will be allowed only to be used by him um, as well as the extremely luxurious quarters. So that's definitely going to be an important part of the fortress and I have yet to decide who it's going to be. I think it's going to be one of the original seven um, once I decide to retire them from their initial jobs. But yeah. So our miners are moving up to the top floor. And there's our other miner. Looks like, uh, well, let's hope they actually beat the water, because otherwise it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a race. Looks like the bottom part's going to breach first. And now he should be running. Yep, there he goes. Now this chamber will start flooding with water. And he's going to breach it. There we go. So now he's going to run. 
and the water will very quickly fill up these two excavation chambers and it will start pouring into the outer ring. You can see it's uh, creating irrigated soil there where it touches, but that's never going to be able to be used. And I think I'm going to tell the dwarves to pull the inner lever. And the way it works is this is the the outer the mo outermost floodgate layer. This is the inner ring, and this one goes to the the bottom floor right here. So let me pull the inner one, and that'll keep the water from entering the lower chambers area. Seems there's a cat running around up here. Don't know what that's about. cat seems to be running into the water. I don't know why it's doing that. Now, there it goes. See how high this water is now. Alright, so the inner floodgates are up. That means it'll fill the entire outer ring now. One nice thing about this water is that it won't freeze in the winter, unlike the actual river. So we'll always have an available source of water, and the reason it won't freeze is because it's classified as subterranean. You can see there over on the side, inside, dark, subterranean. And water will only freeze if it's considered outside, like this water is. Above ground, I guess, is what it is. Yeah, that cat's screwed. Hopefully it's not a pet. Oh, it's a puppy. Whose puppy is this? Uh, hopefully it does not make them go insane. Animals, that puppy is like... This one belongs to one of the miners. Okay. The puppy will probably drown in the chamber because I don't want to release the water further in. Have no clue why it went up there in the first place. So there it's starting to fill the outermost layer as well as the inner ring. Check the water height over here. Oh yeah, this is all level 7 water height. That puppy is going to drown very soon. Oh, someone's organized a party. Go check that out. Siltstone table. Well, there's a lot of siltstone tables, probably in the dining hall. You can see we've got 53 idlers at the moment. That's a lot of idlers, way more than I would ever like to have, but I simply can't designate enough tasks for them to all do. Uh, so... I think we can almost... Yeah, we're about ready to designate more smoothing. So I'm going to have them smooth the inside of these water tubes here that go to the bathhouse, because dwarves can still see those. And that'll give people more work. And the water is very uh, rapidly... Um, filling up this whole chamber here. <laughs> 
The puppy seems to be kind of swimming upwards, but there's no way it's going to escape. Hmm, maybe puppies are amphibious. Seems to be living quite a while for being underwater. Okay. You can see a bunch of dwarves are trying to clean themselves now that there's water in the fortress. Um, and it's time to pull back the insert inner layers. So let's flip that switch. And that will cause water to come flooding into, ideally, the, uh, the main water tank. It might flood this whole room, but that's okay because I don't ever plan on having dwarves enter this room. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and forbid them to enter this room ever again. So the puppy might have a chance. Actually, no, there's no possible way it can escape now. Even if these floodgates are lowered in time and it happens to fall into them, it's still going to end up right down here with no escape. And you can see this is, it's taking a really long time for someone to pull that switch. That's one of the main reasons I want to have someone who's dedicated just to pulling levers. Because it's going to be extremely important that we get these done when I order it. Because sometimes, maybe a critical moment, like if I have a dis defense system set up and it's based around pulling a switch, then we need to pull it that moment. Have no time to wait. There we go, starting to flood in. And you can see it's entering the tube here. Appears to be working just as I planned. Oh, someone's banned certain exports. Wonder what it is. Uh Mayor cannot export pig iron items. So apparently he really likes pig iron. You can see there's a small waterfall being created by this flow, uh, and that's going to generate mist. Mist is something that dwarves really like. It's kind of like the opposite of miasma. Um, and water's already flying down into this chamber. Ooh, we're out of barrels. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel constructing beds, go back to making barrels. And I'll have to reset those stills once I get barrels up and running again. And now that we don't have any room in any of the food stockpiles anymore, um, the dwarves have been just piling the barrels full of alcohol outside the still and in the still. Which is fine, because it's still on the same floor and right next to the dining hall. Um, oh, it looks like it's very rapidly filling this entire area here. You can see there's a very strong waterfall right there by the level of brightness in the mist. And it's probably going to flood this entire room, would be my guess. But that'll take some time, and it won't impact anything, so... Water is now flowing down here.
You can see it's actually pushing stones into the bottom here, the force of the water. So I don't think there's any stones remaining. Yeah, there's no stones on this entire area there. The stones up here have yet to be flooded down. But I think that's just because the force of the water is primarily going down this this slope here instead of pooling across. Yeah, you can see the uh, the downward slopes have seven water in them, as opposed to the part right above it, which only has like three. Basically, that just means all the water that goes in the entire direction is pooling in that little area. And once water reaches a height of 7, I mean, it might be a little bit less than 7, but for sure, once, it, once it's at height 7, then stones will be obscured by water, which is a nice aspect. We might even get some fish floating in to this uh, aqueduct, because it is coming from the river. That wouldn't be bad. I was thinking about setting up a... Uh, an underground fishery basically where we would create a lake and then have docks extending out onto it for fisher dwarves alright so it's time to pull the last lever this one here and that will allow it to start flooding the gigantic water tank and it will take a really long time I think to entirely fill that chamber because it is three stories high and it's like probably one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Three, one, two. Uh, so it's 11 by 11 square. Well, not a square. Yeah, it is square. And then it's 11 by 11 by 3, so it's not a cube. It's like a rectangular prism, but in any case, it's very, a uh, very large volume of water could fit in there especially considering each individual space um, can hold seven units of water. So that's like 11 by 11 by 3 by 7. And that is certainly a very large number. And you can see it's already flooding down. And I'm going to forbid passage to this area for now. Alright, so the water has not really impacted my game's performance at all, so far as I can tell. Which is good news. Wow. It's already filled up this entire layer. Oh no, it just looks like that from above. That's kind of cool. There's so many things you can do with water if you've got uh, the right kind of tools. Um, and our fortress has no shortage of different professions. We've got one of everybody at least by now. Any of this entered yet? No, nope. still waiting on this floor to catch up. Oh, it's starting to enter this chamber now. You can see all the lighter colored tiles are areas where water has reached a height of 1. 
slowly becoming more and more prevalent. And it's pretty much all, there we go, entirely full of water now. So the amount of time it has taken to co completely fill up this uh, entire chamber here is rather short. And now I've realized something. I'm going to have to revise these designs a little bit. Just have to push the uh, the edges, the walkway around, because it's going to require that we build a wall around the water source so that it does not flood over and disturb the dwarves. Okay. I think that is good right there. So I'm actually going to open this up again. Have our miners go down there and sort that out. And water is very, uh, a lot more rapidly filling up these chambers than I thought it would. And of course, once the tank itself is full, then this room here will completely flood. And that puppy is still alive, so I guess puppies are amphibious. Or else it's just barely hanging on because the water height's only at six. I don't know. It's like poking its head up above the surface or something. The water height is building up in here as well. Just check something. Oh, that'll be kind of annoying. It'll give me damp stone notifications. Yeah, because there's a gigantic source of water directly above it. So now we've got plenty of miners coming down here, and I'm wondering what the heck this little thing is. A dwarven baby. Three months old. Huh. So it appears we've been at this fortress a little over four years. If we go by that baby's age and its birth date. And in four years' time, we've accomplished quite a lot, I think. Created an entire city, according to the game, which is always nice. And soon we'll probably be, be propositioned to get a baron in our fortress. And the baron will be taking the mayor's quarters, I think. And the mayor will get these quarters. I don't know. Maybe the baron will be our switch puller. Oops, just check here, water height of 7, should be coming up another level any second. You 
can tell there's still water flowing into it because of the fact that this is still falling down instead of expanding outwards. There would be no purpose of the water falling if it was not still growing taller. Um, Not sure exactly why that this is operating the way it is. And I'll go ahead and start uh, building that wall around the edges. Make it out of siltstone. All right. Oh, there it goes. Now it's flooding the upper chamber. It's kind of a cool way that the, the water moves. I think it would make a good, like, screensaver kind of pattern. Alright, so the entire water tank is full completely. Uh, that means water will no longer be going down into the chute, but would rather expand farther. Uh, so what I'm going to do is close the outer layers there. And that will prevent the uh, the room from being entirely flooded. At least if our dwarves hurry up and do it on time. Now this water tank will eventually run out, but uh, for the purposes we need it, it's, it's going to last an extremely, extremely long time, and we can always refill it uh, once we need to do so. Where is this happening? Oh, it's one of these situations. It's where whenever you make a wall and there's stone sitting underneath it, and you make the wall more than one tile wide, then the dwarves tend to basically use the stone that's sitting there to make it and they can't use they can't build something on top of stone that's being used like so the guy who's building this wall segment will pick up stone from this wall segment and this wall segment will come down here and try to build his but he can't because this stone's not picked up yet then this guy comes over to build his and turns out this guy needed that piece of stone to build the wall it's like a big mess and they're all parading down into the the water chute there. Currently serves as a maintenance tunnel. I don't think water can evaporate underground, but I'm not entirely sure. So you just got to keep uh, reactivating these constructions because they'll eventually finish them. Ooh, it looks like there's actually some drainage going on here. Not really sure what that's all about. A human caravan has arrived. All right. Be good to get some more trade going. They're coming in from the oft unused southwestern portion of the map. Whoa. I don't know what's going on here. Looks like our fisher dwarves are just absolutely dominating or else the the river is washing them up due to like some kind of pushback from my construction here I don't know alright uh, let's go ahead and re reactivate those constructions 
and start placing the new wall over here. Okay. And this wall will allow our dwarves to kind of circumvent the water. I think what's going to happen here is I'm just going to use a small little shaft that goes around the edges so that dwarves can get from one side to the other. And I'll probably be building a uh, a downward staircase from this floor that goes to the maintenance level of the plumbing section. Oh, that puppy is finally drowned. That's probably going to not to be too good for our guy. All right, so I had to deal with something there, but uh, I think that's all it's going to be for this video. Um, and I'll pick it back up next time. See you.